Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Bravo Vince 3556. Thanks for the suggestion, Vince. You asked, why do electrical plugs have holes in the prongs? At first glance, that question sounds like something you'd ask at 3 a.m. while staring at a wall outlet for too long. But once you think about it, yeah, why do those little holes exist? Are they just decoration? Weight reduction for faster plugging? Some kind of secret engineer handshake? Well, stay tuned as we uncover the surprisingly clever reasons behind those tiny holes in your plugs, right here on Explaining Everything. Let's start with the most practical reason. The holes help the plug stay in the socket. It's not about making them look fancy or aerodynamic. Those holes line up with small spring-loaded bumps or detents inside the outlet's metal contacts. When you insert the plug, those bumps snap into the holes, creating a tighter grip. Basically, it's the plug's version of a seatbelt click. You know it's connected properly when it snaps into place. This not only keeps the plug from falling out too easily, but it also ensures a consistent electrical connection. Because yeah, a loose plug is a bad time. You don't want half your toaster running at 50% power while you're making breakfast. Some outlets don't have those bumps though. That's why your plug sometimes feels loose or falls halfway out like it's trying to quit its job. But when the outlet does have them, the holes make all the difference. They lock in, ensuring your electricity flows smoothly without sparks or slippage. So the next time your phone charger clicks satisfyingly into place, thank those tiny holes for giving you a snug, stable connection. Now here's where things get sneaky smart. The holes aren't just for plugging. They actually make manufacturing easier and cheaper. When electrical plugs are being made, those holes help machines hold the prongs in place during assembly or coating. Imagine a big robotic line grabbing thousands of metal prongs every minute. The holes act as convenient anchor points so the machines can manipulate or align them precisely without scratching or bending them. And when they get electroplated, that shiny finish you see, the holes let the chemicals flow through evenly, avoiding weird buildup. In short, it's like giving your plug little air vents so it doesn't get gunky during the spa treatment. Plus, the holes can even help save metal. They're tiny, sure, but when you're making millions of plugs, even shaving off a few micrograms per unit adds up to a real chunk of money. It's basically corporate minimalism. Do we need the whole prong? No, Greg, drill a hole in it. All right, now let's get into the safety side. Because electricity, as we all know, isn't something you want to freestyle with. Back in the mid 20th century, electrical safety standards were starting to become more serious. And the holes? They became a convenient feature for safety locks and childproof mechanisms. Some power strips, training devices, and lab equipment use those holes to lock plugs in place. Little clips or metal bars slide into them, preventing the plug from being removed unless you release the lock. That's super handy in industrial or lab environments where unplugging something accidentally could cause chaos or a very expensive explosion. At home, there are even outlet covers that use the holes for childproofing. Because let's be real, kids see two little shiny holes and think, hmm, I bet I could fit something in there. The holes allow locks to latch in securely, 
keeping curious little fingers from turning into lightning rods. So in a way, those holes aren't just part of the design. They're part of a silent safety system that's been helping prevent accidents for decades. And fun fact, the holes also help inspectors and testers quickly check if a plug meets proper safety specs. If they see the holes in the right size and spot, that's one more sign it's made to standard. So, what started as a mechanical convenience evolved into a feature that literally saves lives. Pretty wild for something you probably never even noticed before, huh? All right, so if we've got plugs that don't need the holes to function, why do we still have them? Well, partly because tradition dies hard. Once the holy prong design became standardized, manufacturers just stuck with it. It's cheaper and easier to keep making them that way than to redesign an entire mold for something everyone's already using. Think of it like the QWERTY keyboard. It's not the most efficient layout, but it's what everyone's used to, so it stays. Electrical plugs work the same way. Everyone expects holes, so holes they get. Plus, some electrical codes still account for those holes in certain countries, especially where locking or testing devices are common. It's a universal feature that keeps things compatible, and no one wants to be the company that makes a holeless plug that suddenly doesn't fit some power strip in Wisconsin. And there's something poetic about it. The holes are tiny relics of a time when engineers designed for both function and flexibility. They didn't know every future outlet or gadget, but they built in something that would always work, no matter what. It's like a small reminder that sometimes the best designs are the ones you never think about. The ones quietly doing their job every day while you scroll TikTok with your charger plugged in. So to recap, they're not there for decoration or airflow. They help plugs grip tighter, make manufacturing cheaper, improve safety, and keep devices compatible across decades of designs. Those tiny holes are the unsung heroes of modern electricity, quietly keeping your gadgets powered and your house not on fire. The next time you plug something in, give a little nod of appreciation to those tiny metal circles. They may look small, but they carry a shocking amount of purpose. If you enjoyed uncovering this little mystery of modern design, give the video a like, subscribe for more everyday science stories, and maybe don't play with those plugs in the first place. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.